One of the best things about the Isle Legacy is the sheer power imbalance between types of dinosaurs. So when I spawned into my Isle Legacy server as a humble juvenile Ceratosaurus, I knew that there would be danger, and so I spent my time as a juvenile hunting very confused Avaceratops and keeping a low profile in a remote area of the map. Okay, what's wrong with this uh, Ava? Thunder sounds so much like footsteps, doesn't it? Oh, oh you As you can see, I wasn't having terrible amounts of luck, but with persistence, I finally managed to bring one down. That's right, stand there. Stand there as I bite you. In the first stage of my life, this was all I did. I ate, I drank, I hunted Avaceratopses, I sat on their corpses in the bushes, and I grew. I travelled at night to explore an area of the map called the Radio Tower, which has a radio tower at it, and was popularly the haunt of Gigas. Now, there's virtually no way even an adult Ceratosaurus can defeat a Giga, but I thought, well, I've got the cover of night. I've never seen this area before, and I didn't think there was anyone there, so I thought I'd go and check it out. And I was right. It turns out there wasn't anyone there at this particular time. Uh, there's a dumpster full of water. And that dumpster full of water will become an important key point in this story later on. Exploring parts of the map I'd never been to, I left the radio tower and found the radio shack which wasn't actually terribly interesting, as there was not really anything there that a uh, young dinosaur like myself could do. Right, I guess that's it. Okay, well, not terribly interesting. So I decided to start heading east, and eventually I would grow into a full adult. Right, we're growing. Great. There you are. Life is a lot easier, even as a young Ceratosaurus adult, and I spent the time traversing the map, hunting down prey, and enjoying the day. Because you can say a lot of things about the Isle, but one of the things you can't deny is it is a phenomenally beautiful game. Oh, what a great screenshot that is. I'm going to take it. To any trouble throughout the entire day, and so again, it was just quite relaxing. I was only about 83% grown, so I didn't really want to get into any massive fights. So I kept, so I kept hunting Avaceratopses and trying to stay out of trouble. I was heading towards the center of the map because I knew there'd be more people around there, and nighttime fell as I approached a river. Although, having not encountered anything up until this point, I was feeling quite relaxed. Being an adult Ceratosaurus, although not fully grown, but still reasonably experienced, I thought I could probably handle anything that came my way. I took a break to refresh myself at a watering hole, and realised I might not be alone. Oh, it certainly sounded like something was over there. It's probably just my paranoia, though.
guys here from fun trips. Pretty sure they're this way. Shit! Fucking hell! When a Ceratosaurus is ambushed by a fully grown Giga in the middle of the night, there is literally nothing that you can do. Except spawn in as a juvenile Ceratosaurus and grow yourself all over again. But this time, this time I wanted revenge. Because I knew who that was. That was a chap who comes on the server called The Last Russian, and he is always a Giga. A fully grown Giga, and he always seems to be in crouch in the middle of the night, directly in my path, and so I thought, right, that's it. I knew that the Giggas had a breeding colony at the radio station, and if I couldn't kill a fully grown Giga, which I probably can't, then I'm definitely going to kill some of their younglings. And so nurturing hatred towards Giggas in my heart, I sat down under a tree, and I began to grow. And I thought, endlessly, about the eternal suffering I was going to inflict on the Giga Nation. As I waited, stewing in my own rage, I realised I could hear the approach of an adult Carnotaurus. And I assume... It's Carnot. See, if I were fully grown, I'd be well up for killing a Kano. But as it was, I was merely a vulnerable juvenile, and the steps of the Carnotaurus got closer and closer and closer. I was like, it's like, well, I would. But I'm holding a miniature. And if I move, I'm worried I'll give away my position. The Carnotaurus was accompanied by a juvenile of its own, so my only option was to sit there quietly and hope they didn't notice me. And that's when an Avaceratops spawned right on top of me. That thing run right fucking through me. It kept running around my location, and I was becoming increasingly worried that it was going to give away my position to the Carnotauruses, and they were making a lot of noise, and this was really starting to put me on edge. My heart leapt in my throat as the adults and the juvenile came within feet of my hiding place. But I held my nerve, and they ran off after the Avaceratops. I waited for as long as I could, but I was getting desperate for water, and so I had to take the risk and make my way down to the pool and drink. Thank you, it looks like the Carnos have moved on. However, the Kanos had not moved on, and nearly caught me out in the open. Clearly knows I'm here. <laughs> Time to go. I made a break for it, and luck was on my side as I managed to escape. But that was definitely too close for comfort. As I was growing, I could see that the Giga Nation were increasing the size of their family through their discussion in the global chat. They had had a baby, called Rabs, and he was admiring the size of his daddy the last Russian. While he was prospering as a family man, I was struggling against the local wildlife. Oh, really? Oh, 
god, look at this little shit. Gotcha. Little git. Honestly, Russians go around bragging because he's a fully grown giga. I'm, I swear to god, I'm just going to grow a Rex and murder him. I spent another half an hour or so as a juvenile, desperately running from tree to tree and trying not to be eaten by Carnotauruses. But eventually, I finally reached the adult stage of life and was able to grow. Boom. Now, as an adult, and with the cover of night, I was able to enact the second stage of my plan. Baby back giga ribs. So I headed back to the radio tower. Right, they're all up there. I'm certain the gigas are up here. Now the question is, is it wise to go and try and terrorise them? In the night. Maybe I could kill one of the babies. <laughs> Though I couldn't see them, the giggers were definitely here, talking loudly. Well, they're not far away. Wish I had some cover. So I continued to creep forward. I have no idea why I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm just going to get myself eaten. Getting down here, it's just gonna get my leg broken and they're gonna eat me. So by the light of the radio tower, I stalked towards the Giga Nest. But the cliff was just too sheer. I'm probably gonna fall down and break my bloody legs. Fuck! I hope they didn't hear that. So now, with a severely broken leg, I had to decide what I was going to do. And it was too dangerous to just sit there, so I had to get up and limp on. Jesus Christ. I mean, this is literally how it ends, lads. Oh, and I can hear the car noise off in the distance. I bet one of the giggers just walks down and murders me now. Literally out of the darkness. I'll try and hide in this bush. Just, just chilling. <sighs> it was just too dangerous. The giggers were too close. I had to keep moving. Well, I'll still try and hide in this ditch if nothing else. Perched on the edge of a cliff with a broken leg, about 50 meters away. Here we get right, okay, brilliant. 
Finally, my leg was healed and I was able to resume the mission, so I continued circling the Giga Nest and looking for some cover by which to approach. The Giga family was talking in the global chat, and this really helped facilitate my approach. Without them bragging to one another about how well Radio Giga and their Giga family was going, I wouldn't have been able to find them with such ease. And little did they know that I was there. I'm gonna get myself killed, but damn, I wanna kill that baby. That's what they get for murdering me. Yeah, they do look deadly, don't they? They do indeed. Slowly but steadily, I crept towards the light of the radio tower. The anticipation was bristling through me. At any moment, a gigantic Giga could burst out of the trees and end me. The closer and closer I crawled, the higher and higher the tension became for me. The Giggas were totally unaware of the danger to their younglings that was approaching. <laughs> Getting very close now. <laughs> But as close as I was, I still couldn't see one of the Giggers. I couldn't get my eyes on any of them. Oh, I can't see anything. I want eyes on the target before I go in there. I wish they'd carry on talking so I could triangulate. I knew that they were directly ahead, but there was no cover. And a Giga's night vision is not terrible. It's at least as good as mine. So I would have no window of opportunity to react before they saw me. Tell you what, chat, I am. Um, oh. I still can't see the fucking things. However, I slowly and patiently, with all the time in the world or so I thought, crept forward until I realised it was starting to become day. It must literally be. Just feet in front of me. Morning was breaking, and not only was my thirst incredibly low, but my hunger was reaching critical levels. And if I started getting very, very hungry, then the damage I would receive would cause me to involuntarily cry out. Oh no, I'm not hungry. I'm going to start again. I'm going to give my position away. Fuck are they? But suddenly I saw movement. Ah. Heading towards the dumpster full of water was the baby Giga. He had his back to me, 
and didn't know I was there. So I went for it. <laughs> One hit was all it took to kill him. It took the Giggers a few moments to realise what had even happened. <laughs> you little shits! <laughs> they know it's me. Nobody saw me. The silent assassin in the night. <laughs> oh, food. I need that. I'd successfully gone in. I'd successfully hunted the Giga Prey. And I'd successfully killed it. Was it going to end there? <laughs> of course it wasn't. Good morning. <laughs> Revenge. Oh my goodness, it's sweet. Russian hadn't even been at the radio tower, so he didn't know what was going on. So, you know, I had to let him know. <laughs> Russian decided to commit himself to hunting me down, and so I thought, maybe, if he was absent from the nest, and perhaps if the Divine Potato is absent from the nest, there'd be another baby Giga in there that I could sneak in and kill as well. So I thought I'd go back and give it a try. <laughs> They've no idea where I went. You don't know. I'm a Sarah. I could have jogged anywhere by now. Ah, and of course a broken leg. <laughs> I didn't even know they were chasing me. But from this point onwards, the Giggers were committed to my destruction. <laughs> they didn't know where I was, but I didn't know where they were either. And so I continued my journey back towards the radio tower. I've no idea where these giggers are. Someone springs out of the bush and kills me, well... You know, I had it coming. And that's what's usually called foreshadowing. Here's Russian. <laughs> and that, I'm afraid, is the story of where this Ceratosaurus ends. But at least he got his revenge. Perhaps I should have gone and looked for the Carnotauruses, which would have been a much more realistic prospect to fight. But I just can't resist sticking it to the Giggers. Damn them all to hell.